Am I the asshole for asking my ex-wife to stop making my kids jealous and flaunting? So I've, male 38, been divorced from my ex-wife, female 35, for 10 years. And we have two kids together, 12 male and 10 male. I remarried a year later while she is still single. I have three additional children, female 9, female 7, female 3. I have my sons over every weekend. About four years, my ex-wife opened up an online business and she's been making six figures while my wife is a stay-at-home mom and i make 30k to support our family wow i'm not very good at math but that's 30 30 what math do you need what math you can't live on it it's hard with a wife and three kids three kids wife and then he has to pay probably something for the other two can't live on that on your own wow 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 i don't know how he's doing it so you can imagine how this difference has affected our two households they live in a gated community she drives a 2022 rsq3 audi sick and she and our sons go to two extravagant holidays a year. My sons came over this weekend and started telling me and the girls they're going on a Disney concierge cruise in the summer. My daughter started crying, saying, Daddy, we want to go. And when I looked online for the prices, they're priced at 5 k per person. It's been all they've been talking about nonstop. I feel like their wealth is being shoved down our throats when we can barely afford heating this Christmas. It's hard not to be hateful, but I sent her a long text saying, Stop trying to make us feel less than. I also told my sons in private, please don't mention holidays or gifts around the girls. She replied with saying, it's not her problem how we feel and when she does nice things for our boys, that me and my wife are the last people on her mind. Am I reading into this too much or am I the asshole for saying she's spiteful? My turn? Yeah. <laughs> you or Justin? Let's let Justin go first this time. Okay. It's your show. Direct. This one's really difficult for me. It's a lot of gray area. Um, I always like to try and guess what the vote is but I need to think through it a little bit. Okay, do you want him to go first then? No, I'm going to think through it out loud. Okay. So first thought off the bat is you are split up and what she does and how successful she is kind of has nothing to do with you in a way where if she has the money to spoil the kids and go do really cool things, she shouldn't not do that because you are unable to provide that for your other kids. Mm -hmm. She's not wrong in doing those things because she's providing Providing awesome experiences for your kids that, you know, because she's able to. So you wouldn't be like, hey, don't like take them on things because of X. And then it also becomes weird because I, I can't imagine being in that position where you're split up from a partner who's very successful and can provide these experiences. And now these kids come and tell your kids this. So you're caught in the middle of a really tough situation. Yeah. And it's very natural to be jealous. It's very natural to develop like hateful feelings because you're jealousy you can't control it at some level when you can barely do xyz and they're out here like just living the life every time when i got essayed by my cousin growing up my cousin ended up being a lot older than us and he always wanted to be around the girl cousins so that means he always wanted to be around me and my sisters i was 12 my sister was 16 and my other sister was 17 so we were all pretty young my cousin was in and out of jail Because honestly, I was too young to know, but all I knew is that he was a disgusting person. He got arrested because he ended up essaying his own sister. But before this, I heard from my own sister that he tried to essay her too. Okay, so like I said, he was in and out of jail. And for some fucking reason, my parents had to bring him to my house. Like, I was literally scared of this man. All of my sisters were. But I guess some of the family members had to help out. So he was staying at our house. All right. So this was 2021. And there was this one afternoon where I found my cousin in my room. And he was asleep. He woke up for five minutes and he was just chit-chatting with me. Like I said, I was only 12 years old. So he started cracking jokes, trying to be funny. And I was laughing, having a good time with him. Ever since he was staying at our house, he was being very good. Found a job and even tried to go to school. So he was on his best behavior. So we were cracking jokes late at night and our parents had already went to sleep. So I ended up sleeping next to my cousin. In the morning when I woke up, I noticed that my cousin was undressed completely. So I was half asleep and I noticed that my cousin wanted to do something with me. What he was trying to do with me, I didn't know much about it. So as I was half asleep, I noticed that my cousin was being super touchy with me. I felt like someone was tickling my part and also my chest. Like I said, I didn't know much about this. 
So when I went to the restroom, I noticed that my pants were off. I asked him what had happened and he said he didn't know nothing. I ended up telling his mom and she was just rude to me and did not believe me. Am I the asshole for taking family photos to send without my actual mom and stepdad after they took their family photos without me? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I was born to a teen mom. My mom had me at 17. She later married my stepdad and they have my step siblings who are 9 and 12. I'm 18 and in college now. Before Easter, I was at college and I found out that my mom and stepdad took family photos without me for their cards. My mom said that it was just because she needed them printed out in time and I was at college. But college is only 25 minutes away and I feel like my stepdad is resentful that their family includes some other guy's child. He also described the photo as of close family and then backpedaled and said I just wasn't as close physically because I'm at college. So I decided to play a little joke. I took my younger siblings and two of my best friends to the Walmart photo shop and we took deliberately cheesy family photos all wearing blue jeans and jean jackets. My friends dressed as my mom and stepdad. My female friend wore a bald cap to be my stepdad and my male friend wore a wig and a denim dress to be my mom. We took a bunch of pictures with props and picked a favorite of all of us standing in silly action poses wearing raccoon skin hats. We all agreed that my friends looked like my parents when the picture was postcard sized. It was honestly a really fun photo, really different than the serious ones my family always takes. I had to print it out on the cards and sign them with love, comma, the family name. I then swapped the cards in the envelopes my mom had prepared and resealed them with the sort of stickers she uses. Apparently, a couple of my extended family members didn't look hard enough at the pictures to notice something was off and just displayed them. But a few people mentioned to my mom that the picture was funny, which pissed her off because she thought they were talking about her boring photo. A few people mentioned to my mom that the picture was funny, which pissed her off because she thought they were talking about her very boring photo of them all sitting on a picnic blanket with a giant Easter basket. Then my aunt sent a photo of the postcard to the family group chat and said, this isn't you, is it? My mom was furious at me for sending out the joke cards and embarrassing the family and also not sending out the cards that she made. I told her that I didn't get why she was upset about being left out of the family photo. Apparently, it isn't a big deal to be treated like you're not part of the family. She said I was making a mockery of her and my stepdad by having cross-dressers be in the photo. I said that I just wanted a photo with my close family just like my stepdad did. And that I consider those friends of mine my closest family. Because I guess that's just something we can choose now. My mom got mad at me for sassing her like that. She told me to leave and I went back to college. Am I the asshole for defending my friend and saying my wife needs to work on her insecurities? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I've been married to Jessica for 13 years and we have two girls, 12 and 5. I have a female friend, Madison, who I've known since before I was with Jessica. This has never caused much of an issue because I met Madison through her ex-husband who is still one of her best friends. And we usually hang out in a group so Jessica has never felt jealous or threatened. She doesn't like Madison though due to clashing personalities. She feels like Madison and our mutual friend's wife look down on her. But she can't come up with any examples and admits it was just a gut feeling. I don't know what to believe there because other people have told me they felt like it was Jessica who hated the two other women. Madison has a glamorous life. She used to work in fashion and married a guy with a lot of money. So my 12 year old has always been in awe of her just due to the clothes and the parties. This annoys Jessica, but we never thought much of it. Jessica is more of the girl next door and looks down on Madison for some of the glamour. My five year old has been having some behavioral issues lately, so we're working on that, but everyone else is a little tense. Madison and her current husband stopped by Saturday night after attending some sort of gala fundraiser. Madison was dressed up for the gala. Our five year old heard and it woke her up. She saw Madison and said, you look like a princess, you're so pretty, and your dresses are so pretty, I wish you were my mom. Madison laughed and said thank you, which Jessica thought was insensitive. When she left, she went off about what a bitch Madison was. She's been pressuring me to distance myself from the friendship. I argued that Madison didn't do anything, but Jessica said it didn't matter. Today, she brought it up again, and I told her she needs to work on her insecurities. One of the homes directly across from me installed security floodlights in the driveway. I was awoken at 1 a.m. with my room flooded with light. No. I instantly panicked and thought a helicopter searchlight was shining through the window. The light proceeded to kick on and off all night no. long. No. The lights flashing on and off is jarring and wakes me up every single time. Even with the curtains drawn, I discovered that it is a violation of light trespassing 
embarrassing and nuisance for numerous reasons. I also found a form for submitting a formal complaint, which I completed in less than a couple of minutes. When a coworker had inquired why I had been looking so tired, I told them the full story. They asked why I couldn't just go over and have a conversation with the neighbor first as they were sure it wasn't intentional. AITA? Whether or not it was intentional, it was definitely thoughtless. You know how lights work. They are very bright. My roommate invited a bunch of people into our dorm. One of the girls asked me if I was circumcised. I felt the question was invasive and personal, so I responded, what's your pubic hair situation? <laughs> My question was less personal than hers. It was about a styling decision, which is done on your own volition and easily changeable. I was hoping she would realize she had overstepped the line, but instead she just blushed and ran out of the dorm room. Now my roommate is mad at me and wants me to apologize to her. If she doesn't like having me ask her questions about her private area, she shouldn't be asking me questions about mine. AITA? I didn't really like how OP tried to rationalize how this question was less personal. In fact, we were just talking on the bonus episode about how much uh, sort of rhetoric there is from men mm -hmm who discuss women's pubic hair. Yes, I mean, honestly, I would say that women strictly style their pubic hair based on what the men in society want us to do. Am I the asshole? <laughs> I made my wife go back to work by lying about quitting my job as well. Let's get into it. My wife didn't like her job. I was telling her to look for a job and while she was at her, still in her current company she wanted to take a break from work but we couldn't afford it right now due to our accidental conception she's three months pregnant so i made her a resume and applied her to a, a few interviews however she did not attend any of them saying that she doesn't feel like it and she wants to be a stay-at-home mom i told her that we weren't even planning this pregnancy and now we cannot afford for her to become unemployed as well she didn't listen and just quit her job without consulting me I was super mad at her. I told her I don't want to bust I don't want to bust my ass while she relaxes at home. She cried and said she doesn't want to work anymore. So I told her I'd be quitting my job as well and then we can both be jobless and homeless with our child. I pretended to quit my job in front of her by sending an angry email to my boss, but instead I sent it to my friend. She was shocked and she asked me why'd I do such a thing. I told her tough luck and went to sleep. <laughs> the next morning Onwards, she got ready for an interview and started attending interviews. Wow. I called my work and took a break of one week. Today, my wife got a job and she gave me the news at night while we were having dinner. I then told her the truth about not quitting my job and about it being a way to make her get back to work. She got mad at me and told, her, told me I was very petty and that I should have just sucked it up and let her stay at home. And now she's not talking to me. Am I the asshole? what do y'all think in these comments oh my goodness bro i don't really think he's an asshole like i feel like that should be a discussion between the both of you um especially if y'all weren't in the financial like like financially able to for her to be a stay-at-home mom i don't think that was very fair for her to just make that decision on her own to just quit her job um but to lie <laughs> but to lie mm. the communication is mm, yeah but anyway i don't want to say too much because i don't know that's a crazy ass situation but honestly i'm glad that you know y'all gonna be able to provide for y'all's baby and maybe later down the line she can talk to you about being a stay-at-home mom after y'all you know get everything settled but Dang, that's crazy. What y'all think? Mm. We have the original poster, and then the person that they were talking about in the post found it. I've been waiting for this day. Am I the asshole for showing up at my ex's wedding in a pretty dress? My ex and I had a peaceful divorce. We co-parent our three children together, and there haven't been many issues. My ex is getting married to Stephanie. I like Stephanie. She has been great with my kids and makes my ex happy. My ex invited me to their wedding, and I was happy for him. It was my day with the kids, so it made sense for me to come to the wedding, was his reasoning. When I arrived at the wedding, 
Stephanie thanked me for dropping the kids off and brushed me off. We had never had any issues before. I explained that I was going to stay for the reception and she was very upset. I was confused because I assumed she knew I would be in attendance. It turned out she didn't consider that I would actually accept the invitation. I told her that I was invited and since I took the two hour drive, I would be staying for the entire duration. She didn't like this response. Stephanie asked me to leave and I stood my ground. She went on to complain about my dress upstaging hers. My ex and former mother-in-law helped her to calm down and the wedding shortly began. I thought that was the end of it, but later in private, Stephanie accused me of trying to ruin her special day. She is convinced that I wanted to show off and make the wedding about my divorce. She said it was rude for me to not leave after the bride requested it because it was her special day. I told her that I am not responsible for her insecurities and once again reminded her that I have no interest in stealing my ex back. <laughs> okay. I mean, for me, it's pretty straightforward. The one thing I'm still kind of grappling with is the, like, the bride asks you to leave and, like, kind of going right uh, directly against that is maybe, like, a tad rude. But here's the thing. This is not just an ordinary guest. Mm -hmm. This is the mother of your stepchildren. So, I think people were like, okay, your title is all about a pretty dress, right? And so people were, like, asking, like, what dress did you wear? Yeah. I don't care if she's dripping in Gucci. Like, if you show up and you look, I, I, you want me to look bad on purpose? Mm -hmm. Okay, then don't invite me to your wedding. I'll never over my dead, hot body. It's interesting. Um, There's so, clearly another element here. Maybe this dress is like literally a wedding dress. I don't know. So the dress got posted. This is the dress. Mm. <laughs> okay. It's something you would wear to a military ball or... No, I see the issue now. Very, so, very wedding dress. Very wedding dress. If you made dress. that white, you'd be like, yeah, I've seen that wedding dress a million times. So now we have Miss Stephanie's post, who is... The bride. Ex's partner, the bride. And it's titled, My wedding was ruined by a jealous ex, and she decided to brag about this on Reddit. My husband and I have been married for two weeks, and I'm already having regrets. <gasps> My oh, husband's no. ex has really been making things difficult for us. She makes sure my stepchildren call me by my first name rather than any term of endearment. Our wedding happened to fall on one of her days with the kids. My husband invited her for reasons I am still unsure of. I was aware of her receiving an invitation, but my husband never informed me that she had accepted. She came with the kids an hour later. I assumed she was dropping them off, but she had intentions to stay. She was dressed more elegantly than me, and that felt off, so I asked her to leave. She disrespectfully told me that she she would be staying. My husband and mother-in-law told me that she was like family and would not be leaving. I was disgusted by this because it was obvious what this woman was doing. She posted the story on here, but in a way that made me out to be a toxic villain in the story. It wasn't hard to identify myself because I recognized the dress and she also used my real name in the story. I don't understand why she is doing this because we had been civil with each other until now. Mm. And I'm very offended by the way she degraded me in her defensive comments and by the fact that my husband husband took her side. Yikes. Is that all she wrote? That's all she wrote. My husband and I are in our late 20s and have been married for four years. He finished college with a finance degree and thought he'd go into accounting, but quickly found out that it wasn't his passion. He bounced from jobs and ideas pre-COVID, but nothing really stuck. Since COVID, he hasn't attempted anything and said that after the pandemic ends, there will be a boom of jobs so he can find what he's passionate about. I've been working full-time and thankfully, my job became remote. I've been paying the bills and keeping the food on the table. After the fiscal year closed, my work had done really well. We sell medical testing equipment, which was a big product of 2020. I was given a promotion and a pay raise, but also a small bonus. It was exciting because I could finally repair my purse and replace some shoes that were destroyed. When I told my husband, he seemed way more excited than me over this promotion. He went off about how he was going to redo his game area and get new systems. I was dumbfounded and got quiet because I couldn't believe what he was saying. He eventually went out and spent all of my bonus on a new computer. We got into a huge argument and he called me selfish for not being happy that he got to achieve his dream. He called me spoiled for being upset that I couldn't spend money on myself first. I called him ungrateful since I was the only one providing. He got mad and left the house saying that I'm making the money so I shouldn't throw it in his face that he doesn't have an income. Everyone thinks I overreacted to something that makes my husband happy. I've gotten so many texts about being an a-hole that I'm starting to wonder, am I? Part two of how my husband spent my bonus on himself. My husband went back to his parents and waited for my apology, which I never gave. Instead, I realized that I wasn't going to treat our relationship like a marriage if he wasn't and I wasn't going to baby an almost 30 year old. When he noticed I drained our joint bank account, he escalated things by saying that I was his and I could never leave him because he owned me. He also said that all of my success was his and without him, I would be a loser dropout. His family was even worse because I had already blocked them so they made fake accounts using apps to hide their number and harass me. They said that I ruined their son's life and how he sacrificed everything to get me to where I am. They also said that throwing him to the side like this was disgusting and I deserved to rot. 
I provided all of this to my lawyer who recommended I get a restraining order and not engage but just keep the records. I separated our finances completely and changed banks. I told him that my husband is never allowed to access these accounts because I feel like he'd take it all and run. I changed my number and took myself off of social media. Part of me is broken our marriage came to an end over a computer. I must look like a fool to everyone for missing the warning signs. I lost a majority of my friends because they thought I was a selfish one since I was the one with the job. They also said that marriage is for better or worse and so on. I filed for divorce and I'm picking up the pieces. Story time about how a stranger disclosed his fetishes to me at the park. I was studying in the park by my house when a cute guy around my age wearing a sweatshirt from my college sat down directly next to me. I thought it was a little odd, especially during the pandemic, so I scooched in the other direction. That's when he started talking to me and introduced himself as Jose, all stuttery and not making eye contact. I thought it was so sweet that he was this nervous to talk to me, so I took the bait and said, Oh, well, hi, I'm Tamara. That's when he tells me that I have a pretty name and that he'd never guess I would be my name. There was a long, awkward pause as I tried to think of what I could say in response to that, and that's when he goes, So, uh, what about a walk around the park? I thought that was really gutsy to ask, but I kind of liked that. I said, Sure, packed up my books, and off we went. I figured it was the middle of the day, surrounded by other people, so the worst case scenario, I could always ditch him if things got shady. We were walking, and he was making more nervous small talk. I told him about my interests and background. He was like, wow, I didn't expect you to tell me so much about yourself. I wasn't sure how to feel about that, but all right. That's when he asked if he should tell me more about himself since it was almost 3 p.m. I assumed he had somewhere to be and I said, sure. Then he said, maybe we should have this conversation at your place. That definitely threw me off and things only got weirder from here. Part two of how a stranger disclosed his fetishes to me at the park. I thought asking me, a total stranger, to stop what I was doing and take a walk with him was gutsy, but what he just said was sleazy at best. I nervously looked for non-confrontational outs and said, ah, ha, ha, we're definitely not going to my place. He said, oh, okay, sure. I didn't mean where you live, just meant the place, where it is we're going. I'm sure you got something all worked out. Anyways, I can tell you about myself, uh, sure. He was looking around to see if other people were listening and he goes, see, I'm really more of an ass kind of guy. I have a major spanking fetish. So if you got any skirts or... I tuned out the rest as I started screaming in my head. Forget the non-confrontational exit, I instinctively went, stop, this conversation is over, turning to hide till it out of there. The guy ran after me going, wait, what? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. The ad said you were cool with kinks and stuff, so I just thought, wow, I'm sorry. All right, that slowed me down. I'm thinking, did he just say ad? Then he said, again, I'm so sorry, and look, this may not be the best time to ask, but am I still getting charged full time even though you're leaving? It turns out, poor guy was experiencing a touch of pandemic loneliness and hired a call girl off some personals online. She told him she'd be in the park wearing almost my identical outfit and described the features similar to mine. Story time when I called out my mother for trying to force me to make out with her. I am currently in 8th grade and ever since I can remember, I have hate kissing my family members. It makes me feel completely uncomfortable, which is reasonable. My mother is 42 and forces me and my brother to kiss her every day. One afternoon, I was chilling in my room, I was drawing, and my mother comes in and tells me that she's gonna go to sleep. She kisses me goodnight, and I purposely kind of dodge her lips because I don't like kissing my family members. She got really upset and said, excuse me, this is not how we kiss in our family. She grabbed my face so hard and forced me to kiss her, but basically, she was freaking making out with me. She wetly kissed me multiple of times for at least 5 to 10 minutes, lecturing me while kissing me that I shouldn't disrespect her like that ever again. I was so uncomfortable the whole time and as soon as she left, I started to cry. I cried myself to sleep that night. I told myself that I was being dramatic. I didn't share this story with no one. And the next morning, I honestly couldn't look at my mother's face. I tried avoiding her all morning, including when she dropped me off at school, told her that I was running late and I just ran inside the school. I swear to God, it started getting weirder. She texted me that same day and said that she was disappointed in me, that I'm basically breaking the family's tradition and that I'm not showing her any love. She asked me if anything was wrong. At this point, I honestly just wanted my mother to leave me alone. I did not want to share this with my friends because I didn't want them to think I was weird. Or that my mother was weird. Because honestly, my mother has never tried to do anything weird to us. Weeks go by, and one morning I go downstairs, since my mother did not wake me up, and I think I was running late to school. I run down to the kitchen, and I see my mom and my brother making out. I honestly freaked out and I felt like I was going to die. My stomach and my neck was burning. I went upstairs and I just ran down the stairs making it heavy so they can hear my footsteps. My mother and my brother separated and I acted like nothing happened. She took me to school and I told her that I needed to talk to her. I threatened her and I told her that I was going to tell another adult what I saw her doing to my brother. 
I told her that I never want to kiss her again in the cheek, in the mouth, and I better never see her kiss my brother again. She freaked out and it stopped ever since. Story time when I got essayed by my dad's best friend. This story is going to be short because it was sent as a short paragraph to my email. I already asked for more details. If the sender wants to send more, they will. Let's respect all stories. Okay, so one day I was at my dad's house and my dad used to live with his best friend called Brad. Brad was a complete weirdo. He totally gave me that weird vibe ever since I met him. I was only four too, so I didn't really know what was going on. I just remember my mother saying that he was weird and the rest of my siblings. So every time my father had to go to work, Brad would babysit me. The SA started happening when I was five years old. Brad would take advantage that my father was at work. He would take me to the bathtub and start touching on my private areas and rubbing my private areas. I was growing up more and since my father and my mother weren't at home, this is when Brad started taking me to my mom's room and he started using toys, adult toys. When he started using adult toys, that's when he completely took advantage of me. And this is when I started to get UTIs. My mother did take me to the doctors, but Brad had threatened to end my life if I confessed to my mother or to my father. Not only was Brad okay. using toys, but he was also using vibrators. Basically any objects okay. that he could use to get pleasure off. I started to get more UTIs and my mother suspected something was wrong. She had asked me if I had any boyfriends and if I still had my V-card. I told my mom no and she got very hysterical. She asked me if I knew what a v-card was and I said yes mom I know what it is and she asked me when and where and who and all I could do was start breaking down. I told her that I did not have a boyfriend, that it was someone very close to us. My mother started panicking and asked if it was my own father. After so many times of being completely essayed by Brad, I finally had to confess to my mother because I knew my period was going to come soon and I just did not want to get pregnant. I ended up telling my mother that it was Brad who was essaying me since I was five years old. We took him to court and court said he couldn't be in jail because he had mental issues. Next court day is November 9th. 